Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. In most cases, technological advancements are exciting and provide huge benefits for consumers. We've seen it with radio, computers, and smartphones. Television is no different. What started out as fuzzy black and white TV broadcasts became color and eventually high definition with a digital transition back in 2009. A new advancement in television is on the horizon that most of you who watch my YouTube channel are aware of. It's known as ATSC 3.0 and marketed towards consumers as next-gen TV. I've covered it on my YouTube channel for over six years. When it first rolled out, there was a lot of excitement from the general public about better picture quality, improved reception, and the potential for TV stations to broadcast more channels. But that excitement quickly turned to disappointment to the point that thousands of consumers, dozens of organizations, and even some broadcast companies themselves have filed comments with the FCC opposing a mandated transition to what's supposed to be a revolutionary over-the-air TV standard. Going through the ATSC 3.0 thread on AVS forum, you'll see the same shift in mood from excitement about TV broadcasts and products early on to a negative tone about encryption-related issues and the potential death of free over-the-air TV. In this video, I'll talk about the history of ATSC 3.0, a timeline of the rollout, how exactly it was botched, and what the future holds. ATSC 3.0, also known as Next Gen TV, was initially developed in 2013 by the Advanced Television Systems Committee, hence the acronym ATSC and ATSC 3.0. Experimental broadcasts took place a few years later, and by 2017, it was officially approved as a TV standard by the FCC. Phoenix was the first market to launch ATSC 3.0 for the public in 2018, and one by one, other markets began to deploy it. The broadcast groups behind the new TV standard requested the FCC not mandate it, but rather let TV stations voluntarily transition to ATSC 3.0, with the requirement that they continue to broadcast all of their channels in the existing ATSC 1.0 TV standard along the way. I include a video in the description if you want to know the details about how exactly a TV station launches ATSC 3.0 in a given market, but for the most part, it's done in a way that viewers benefit from both a new broadcast signal without losing access to channels on their existing TVs and DVRs. It's basically a win-win. When I started my YouTube channel back in 2019, I covered this new TV standard. There was a lot of interest in it considering my first video on ATSC 3.0 was one of the highest viewed videos of the year. A broadcast engineer saw my video and invited me to a lab where ATSC 3.0 is being developed and loaned me a commercial grade tuner dongle to show the world an experimental broadcast that was not accessible by the general public. I was even invited to the 2020 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas to showcase some new ATSC 3.0 devices on the horizon. A few months later, Silk and Dust launched the first consumer ATSC 3.0 tuner. I got my hands on one and tested it with a signal in Pittsburgh that was the first ATSC 3.0 broadcast in the northeastern United States. One of the channels was broadcast on an extremely robust layer that I was able to pick up nearly 80 miles away in a location where no other TV stations in the market reached. This demonstrated huge potential for this TV standard to improve reception for antenna viewers and reach more people in rural areas. More markets began to launch ATSC 3.0, additional set-top boxes became available for consumers, and I was genuinely excited to see the future of over-the-air TV come to life. In 2022, it was announced that TV stations would begin to encrypt their ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals by the end of the year with something known as Digital Rights Management, or DRM. This type of encryption is used on many streaming platforms and for the most part, is invisible to the consumer and just works. At the time, I wasn't concerned about the encryption because I was told it would not impact consumer devices. In addition, a website run by the organization that handled the encryption include a list of companies who were adoptees of the encryption technology. On the list were pretty much all manufacturers of consumer grade ATSC 3.0 devices at the time, including Silk and Dust, which makes the HD Home Run, and Nuvia, which was working on ATSC 3.0 version of their Tableau DVR. My understanding was that as long as a company was on this list, their device would work just fine with the encryption. 
As many of you know, that ended up not being the case. In early 2023, I received emails from several people claiming the ATSC 3.0 set-top boxes they purchased, which included the HD Home Run and Zapper Box, received an encryption message when they tried to tune to a local channel that turned on DRM encryption. At the time, I thought to myself, there has to be some kind of technical mistake either on the broadcasting side or just with the set-top boxes themselves, maybe a former update is needed. As it turned out, there was no mistake. Broadcasters intentionally turned on DRM encryption at a time when the only two consumer set-top boxes on the market could not decode it. Let me repeat that again. TV stations operated by certain broadcast companies intentionally turned on DRM encryption at a time when no consumer set-top box could decode it. Exactly this completely outraged me. For years, I recommended these set-top boxes as a way for consumers in weak signal areas to access their local channels on the more robust ATSC 3.0 signal in their area, and now they were locked out. I contacted numerous TV stations and wasn't getting any answers. It wasn't until a member of Pearl TV, the coalition of broadcast groups involved in the role of ATSC 3.0, reached out to me about promoting Next Gen TV on my YouTube channel did I actually get some answers. Instead of taking what would likely have been thousands of dollars in sponsorship opportunities, I turned the tables and demanded answers. Three members of Pearl TV agreed to meet with me on Zoom and answer some questions about the situation. For the most part, they claim that DRM encryption is needed for TV stations to protect their content from piracy and place blame on the manufacturers for not getting properly certified. On the other hand, multiple set-top box manufacturers and even a vendor of broadcast equipment I talked to at a trade show told me that DRM encryption was not supposed to be deployed on the main channels of TV stations, only for optional premium services that wouldn't be implemented for years. The DRM certification process for a manufacturer doesn't seem quick or easy. It took the Zapper Box nearly a year to develop a solution for their set-top box to decode DRM encrypted channels, and nearly three years later, it still requires an internet connection to do so. The HD Home Run, which is the most powerful network tuner on the market accessible on nearly any device, has yet to obtain approval for DRM certification by the A3SA, and what I see is blatant refusal for no valid reason. Explanations given by the A3SA were completely contradictory, claiming that chip in the HD Home Run was the issue when a set-top box with a similar chip was approved. You can find my video on this whole ordeal linked in the description. For years, I've said that broadcasters' use of DRM encryption on the new ATSC 3.0 TV standard has taken away options for consumers, limited functionality of devices, and slowed down consumer adoption as a whole. I think I'm right because the market has not embraced ATSC 3.0 to the point that the National Association of Broadcasters is petitioning the FCC to mandate it as early as 2028 contradictory to the voluntary launch of the industry demand prior. The proposal has received a lot of pushback from consumers, organizations, and even broadcast groups themselves. Lon Seidman and I even met with the FCC Media Bureau to voice our concerns about the broadcaster's use of DRM encryption. Specifically, how it has taken away devices that would otherwise be available for consumers, doesn't work properly on all devices, and poses a serious danger to public safety. So how did we get here? The answer is pretty obvious. Broadcasters' use of DRM encryption and refusal to compromise. Thanks to DRM, this new TV standard is one step forward and three steps back. The only ATSC 3.0 set-top boxes that work with DRM encryption have to be connected directly to a TV like a converter box from 2009. Network tuners are the future and high demand by consumers. Yet, they are being uh, downplayed the by the industry. Second. There is, as you know, a very active AVS forum kind of community that wants a gateway device, that wants to spread yep. the content throughout their home. That is actually what I do, but... Uh, perfect. Uh, that's yeah. great. But you are a super, super, super sub-minority. Yeah, Be sure to follow my link in the description so, to Dylan's video discussion with Dave Arlen, the, the spokesperson the US, for the Advanced Television Systems Committee, Pearl TV, and the A3SA. Uh, it's, it's a good watch. It's not 1996. Broadcast TV is no longer the only game in town for news, sports, and entertainment. 
There are dozens of free and on-demand streaming services. Currently, YouTube is where most consumers watch content, likely from the unique programming and easy access on any device. If broadcast TV wants to compete, it needs to do the same. Offer great content, be easily accessible on any device, and not require an antenna or set-top box directly connected to every TV in the house. A network tuner like the HD Home Run offers a solution, but the industry refuses to take silk and dust their consumers and frankly, the market as a whole seriously. Businesses that do not understand the market or take it seriously tend to fail. Even for those of you who are fine with directly connecting an antenna or set-top box to a TV, there are limited options to access next-gen TV because of DRM encryption. The hassle and expense of the certification process has resulted in ATSC 3.0 being omitted from lower priced smart TVs that most consumers purchase. Lon Seidman even made a video on this point. Walmart, the largest seller of televisions in the United States, does not carry a single next-gen enabled TV set. So what does the future hold, at least for the NAB's proposal to mandate ATSC 3.0 and shut down the current TV standard by 2030? The good news is that the FCC isn't recommending a forced transition, but rather the removal of the substantially similar rule, which requires TV stations to continue broadcasting all channels in the current ATSC 1.0 TV standard. While it sounds a bit scary, it keeps the transition voluntary. See video linked in the description. The FCC also seems to recognize the issues related to broadcasters' use of DRM encryption and is seeking additional comment after the next meeting on October 28th. It's quite possible that a rule may be put in place restricting the use of DRM encryption on public TV broadcasts, which no doubt in my mind would bring more devices to the market and speed up consumer adoption of ATSC 3.0. Otherwise, this TV standard can still fail. It's ultimately up to the market whether it takes off or not, even if TV stations try to force it. If not enough people give in, broadcasters will have no choice but to keep their channels on the current TV standard if they want to keep viewers in a declining landscape. The reality is that most people who use an antenna to access local channels do not have a next-gen enabled TV or set-top box. Advertising still accounts for about half a TV station's revenue, which is based on ratings. About 20% of a TV station's audience gets their channel over the air from an antenna the majority of which are connected to a TV or DVR with an ATSC 1.0 tuner. The loss of that many viewers would make advertisers furious, demand refunds, and ultimately negatively impact a TV station's bottom line. In plain English, I don't think the current market conditions allow a successful transition to ATSC 3.0, even if an FCC mandate were to be approved. There simply are not enough next-gen enabled TVs and set-top boxes for consumers to purchase. Enforcing TV manufacturers to include 3.0 tuners with the required hassle and expense of DRM certification might result in a shift to smart monitors, where digital tuners are omitted from TVs entirely to save money. This is a real possibility, and broadcasters need to be careful what they wish for. Once the FCC comment period opens up, I'll publish a video with information on how to properly form and submit a comment so that your voice is heard. Since the YouTube algorithm doesn't always push my videos to every subscriber, it's best to either follow my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA or sign up to my email list linked in the description.